Hi fellow reefers, I'm Eddie of Eddie's Reef Aquaria. For those of you that don't know me or are just passing by on the channel, uh, what I do is I do weekly uh, videos, informative, uh, educational. I'll do it about uh, different topics like corals or um, the latest thing like uh, how to control algae or about the lights and so forth and so on. If you go to my channel, you'll notice that I have uh, like subtitles, like for instance, uh, I have a title on corals. So anything that's got to do with corals, I go ahead when I upload the videos and I put them there. Or if it's the uh, innovative Marine Nouveau 40, which is this tank, or uh, informative videos, the Eham uh, Aquastyle 9, that's uh, out of commission. I went ahead and I uh, brought it down. So there's no more videos being produced for that specific targeted uh, type of tank. But if you want to know some, uh, something about that, I still have them there and I'll keep them there. So like I mentioned before, I do weekly videos. What I do is, um, like let's say on Mondays, I decide what topic of discussion I'm going to uh, actually do. And then on Tuesday, when I do the uh, intro uh, with the music, uh, like different angles and different shots, and also targeting and introducing the topic of discussion that I'm going to do. Uh, then afterwards, today, Wednesday, that's when I actually shoot the actual video. And then tomorrow, Thursday, I go ahead, I edit the whole video and I put it together and I launch it. Now, when it comes to all of my videos, I do research. I, I mean, I've been in this, in this hobby for more than 25 years and counting as if you go to the uh, about information of this channel, there's a, a broad paragraph that will show you and explain what I'm all about and, uh, you know, all the years that I've been in it. So what I do is when I pick the topic of discussion, I go into my laptop and I do the research. Uh, although, uh, like I've mentioned in previous videos, there's tons of millions of ways, approaches, uh, how to tackle a certain topic. Uh, certain people uh, will use a different technique, others don't. But at least what I spill out there on a weekly basis is actually research that I have actually done, that I've gone through other videos, through other uh, forums, and I go ahead and I, uh, I do like an outline, and I go ahead and, and I present that to all, all of you out there. So I hope that you like this uh, channel. I hope you go ahead and, and hit the like button and subscribe to my channel. So now let's go ahead and talk about the topic of discussion of today. Today what I'm going to talk about is on the um, Japanese Tutsuto. It's a leather coral. It's a high-end coral, very rare, very expensive. But I went ahead and I uh, got a little frack from Worldwide Corals. And uh, although, again, uh, just to give you a heads up what I'm all about, what I actually do. Uh, every time I get a new coral, I go ahead and then I do the research on that specific coral and I talk about it, the care tips, what it's all about, and I go on and on and on. So today's topic, as I briefly mentioned, it's on the uh, Japanese uh, Tutsuto, also known as a leather coral. So let's go ahead and take a deep dive and I'll tell you my uh, opinion and my research that, that I did. Oh, and one final thing, I try to keep it simple. I can make it more technical because of the experience that I've had for many years, but I try to keep it uh, simple for all walks of life when it comes to this uh, hobby either from beginners all the way to advanced. So let's go ahead and take a deep dive and I'll tell you all about that I found out on simple terms about the Japanese Tutsuto. Hold on one second. Okay, and the usual routine, here I am focused at the coral. Now, if you follow me and you actually saw the previous uh, video on it when I actually uh, purchased it, that one uh, with the uh, Yuma, you'll notice that it was much, much smaller and the uh, tentacles really hadn't come out as much. So if you go back to my previous video as a reference, you'll notice that today what you're seeing is much more, um, uh, more much more extended, which means that's an excellent sign that it already attached to the actual plug. And then of course, uh, how they do it over at Worldwide Corals is if you notice closely, and I also have it with the 
Neptia or Sinolaria, you know, and or, you know, they, they, they get a, a black tie rod and they tie it to the actual plug because there's certain corals that really you, you don't glue them. Uh, in, in my case, I use BSI. Uh, you really don't, don't glue them. What you actually do is you, you uh, either a rubber band or in this case, a tie rod until they themselves naturally, they go ahead and they attach to the surface. It, it could be a rubble, a piece of rock, in this case, a plug. But by what you're seeing, it actually, my indications is by experience and other corals that it has attached because uh, you're noticing that much more of the tentacles have come out. It's, it's, it's more uh, luxurious, you know, it, there's more tentacles coming out. Okay, so going uh, into my research, uh, first of all, as I'm going to mention, it's definitely a toothstone coral, uh, which is a leather coral. And these corals are from the genus, and I'll go ahead and, and write it on the video, uh, Sarcophyton. Uh, that's the, uh, the genus of this actual leather coral. Of course, being a leather coral, it's a soft coral. Now, uh, the, appearance, the appearance seems to look like a mushroom. Uh, what I mean by that is, you know, eventually when it starts to uh, grow and grow, they usually have like a, a little stalk, and then on the top, it opens up and uh, it swells out, and that's the appearance uh, that it gives you like a, a mushroom type of uh, head on, on the top. Now, some have short tentacles and others have long tentacles like, like uh, this one, like the Japanese type. Now, due to the tentacles, whether short or long, they have been known to host clownfish. Because, of course, when the clownfish, when they see that, either uh, the small tentacles or the large tentacles, it reminds them, of course, of uh, the anemone or they also are known to host frog span or torch corals and all that. You know, when, when they see tentacles movement, they'll actually host. So in this case, on my research, I found out that, yeah, the clownfish tend to host these types of corals. Again, as I said, whether short or long polyps. Now, I also found out that um, these type of corals are known to be from deep waters in the wild. They're, they're not sh shallow water corals. They're deep water corals. Now, uh, when it comes to lighting, I found out that these corals can be kept uh, from low to moderate light, but can be acclimated to higher par values. And that is really true because over at Worldwide Corals, if you go ahead and you check their uh, video, the grand opening of the Winter Park store, which you'll, you'll see me practically at the end where I go ahead and, and I, I have a... a a black polo shirt and I go ahead and I put two thumbs up well prior to that you're you're gonna see uh, when Devin from Reef Dudes when he pans the store on the left hand side you're, you're gonna see uh, a tank that has this one has the Japanese tooth stole but also the tank on the back has a Japanese tooth stole as a matter of fact they have a couple of them and if you uh, were to observe that tank you'll notice that this research that I did is totally true. Uh, if you properly acclimate them, you can put them anywhere in the tank because the Japanese stool, uh, tooth stool that they have, it's at mid-level, but they also have another one that's way up there on the upper quadrant of the actual tank. Now, when it comes to uh, water flow, they, they do tolerate moderate water flow. And this would be because these types of corals uh, tend to shed a film over its mushroom appearance, you know, the actual top, about once a month. So as to say, moderate flow would be beneficial to help the shedding process. And that's totally true because on my uh, Equal Style uh, 9 gallon, I did have a big tooth stole. And yes, almost like uh, every month they uh, go ahead and they actually shed. It, it, it's like a thin film. So if you had low water flow, it really wouldn't help. You, you would have to be uh, blowing it with a turkey baser to get that, that film, that skin out of it. Now, what happens afterwards is that they tend to become 
uh, bigger each time, which is totally true. So on these type of corals, in general, it doesn't have to, doesn't have to be the Japanese tooth stove, but all tooth stoves in general, every time they shed afterwards, they, they actually grow a, a, a little bigger. Now, moving on, uh, feeding. Uh, be honest with you, not really necessary, but you could uh, feed phytoplankton like reef roids, which is what I feed uh, once a week. What I'm doing is I have uh, stepped down on my feeding because as you must be aware when you look at the tank, I went ahead and, and I got a non-photosynthetic gorgonia, which those types of corals of gorgonias, they, they need to be fed a lot. So I ramped up my feeding to three times a day. Uh, I was uh, alternating between reefoids and phytophys by reef nutrition. But I had to bring it down because I started to get an issue with um, uh, green algae. So I brought it down to twice a week. So what I'm doing is for all corals concerned, including this one, of course, I'm feeding once a week reefoids and then once a week the phytophys. Now, they are not as toxin as other corals, but could damage a neighboring SPS coral if it's close by. And this, what they're actually referring to is that, you know, when, uh, I mean, when they actually shed, because these type of corals, I mean, they uh, don't have feeler tentacles, you know, like, let's say, like the LPS or certain SPS and, and so forth. These do not have the feeler tentacles. Well, what they have is just tentacles, like I mentioned before briefly, either short or long tentacles. But what happens is, what they're talking about here is actually that when it sheds, if that, that film actually falls uh, right on top of an SPS coral, it could actually damage it. it. It probably could actually kill it. Now, moving along, going to the water parameters, they really should be in check, including uh, frequent water changes. Uh, what I'm doing uh, when it comes to me, I'm doing bi-weekly water changes. Before, I was doing them once a month, but I decided to ramp it up and I'm doing it bi-weekly. So upon doing that, all my elements and minerals uh, come back in check uh, prior to the consumption of the corals, consuming, you know, certain uh, minerals and trace elements that are found in the water. And then one other thing, uh, who is this coral for? Well, to be honest with you, this coral ranges from beginners all the way to advanced reef keepers. And they are known to be hardy corals and the care level being that uh, really is uh, easy coral to be kept. Well, there you have it. I hope you enjoyed the video. You found it fun, educational, informative. If you liked it, hit the thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. Next to it, to the subscription button, there's a little bell. That's the notification bell. So if you hit that, you activate the notifications. So every time I upload a video, which is weekly, you'll be the first ones that Eddie's Reef of Korea uploaded a video. So like I say at the end of all of my videos, happy reefing. Thank you for watching. Keep safe. And until next time, bye-bye.